If you thought the last video was a bit of a stretch, this one is really going to be just a bit of a stretch. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Last time we worked on the side and back stretchers, putting the beading on, uh, making the tenon ready to go into the leg. And these three were, well, they're, they're fairly standard. I mean, a lot of people understand the mortise and tenon method. Um, but for the front stretcher, it's actually going to be separated so that a drawer can go in between. But yet I still need to be able to connect it into the legs so that the legs don't come apart. So we're gonna be doing some dovetail on this and some other mortise and tenon join rates. It looks kind of complicated, but it's not that complicated once you break it down into its steps. So I wanted to actually dive into just this today. If you are watching this and it's been out for a little while, then I will have plans available on my website, and you can actually follow through on this whole series step by step. I'm really trying to go into detail and cover every single step that's possible in this whole process of building this table. So it should be a lot of information. If you'd like to find out more about that, you can look at my website. But let's uh, finish with that and uh, jump into the stretcher. Now the next thing we need to do is the join array on the front stretcher. And the front stretcher will be separated so that the drawer will fit in between. So this top one will have dovetails that will connect it into the legs. And this bottom one will just have a housing joint that will then connect into the leg. So basically just a mortise that slides into the leg. Um, they're fairly simple joints and uh, we can get to cutting them out and how well they work together. So first thing I'm going to do is start with the dovetail end. But before we go any farther, I want to put these together and make sure that I have them matched up. So this one is the top, this one is the bottom, but I want them to go together this way. Actually, no, I want them to go together that way. That matches up a little bit better. And so what I'm going to do is just put a little on this end. And I'll plane that off later, but that lets me know that these connect this way. They can't go together any other way, but one matches like that. So now we can start working on the dovetail on the end of this. Now the first thing we need to do is this actually needs to be one foot two inches long. And it's actually a little over one foot three. So I have about an inch of play in here that I can work with. Um, now neither of these ends are square, so I'm just going to start by squaring off one end. And rather than using a jig or a mortising box, I actually just prefer to run a line around and follow the line with the saw. If you like to use a miter box, then go for it. Um, I'm just not a fan of miter boxes, never trusted them. And I find that I get a really nice accurate joint when I do it this way. So this is what I'm gonna do. So having that accurate line on there, I can come in, just put in one knife wall on one side. I don't have a need to put a knife wall on the other sides because I only care about the side my knife, my saw fits in. I know some people like to put it all the way around, but I like to just follow the knife line. So I'll just start in here and follow the line down. You know what, on this slot here, this slot is not going to make me cut a straight line uh, because I've used it so many times. These ones over here with the 45, these ones are still fairly tight and so I might trust those. But on this one, this is just more or less to catch both sides of the piece so they're not pushing away from me when the saw is cutting it. So I can just start in here and I'm just gonna follow the line down. And there, I've got a perfectly nice, clean, 90 degree edge on this edge here. Now what I'm gonna do with this piece is the first thing I'm gonna do is actually cut the joinery in the end of this. And it's just a small dovetail. Uh, as you can see in the plans here, all I'm doing is cutting a tiny little dovetail in the end. It cuts in an eighth inch and it's a half inch deep. So I'm going to put a mark all the way around it at a half inch in. Now, do I need to put this mark all the way around it? No, I just need to put it on the two sides that I'm gonna be cutting on. It's just easier to figure out once it's all the way around. Now, this is the face or the front of it. I wanna flip it 90 degrees and then cut down an eighth inch on both sides. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing I had with the saw, only I'm not even gonna mess with the marking, the, uh, the knife wall this time. I'm just gonna cut in what appears to be an eighth inch. There, that looks to be about an eighth inch deep. I don't care if it's an eighth inch deep. I don't care if it's a sixteenth inch deep. It just needs to be down a little ways. I'm gonna flip it over 90 degrees and I'm going to cut the exact same thing. Actually, 180 degrees, not 90 degrees. Cut the exact same thing on the opposite side. There, I've cut down approximately an eighth inch from either end. Now I'm gonna put this up against a stop, use my chisel, 
I just cut in slowly until I get back to this point. I could do this with a saw if I wanted to, but I find the chisel to be, number one, more fun, and number two, a little bit simpler. I'm just gonna pare down until I get to the depth of my saw mark, which is right about there. And there, there's half of the dovetail. Just that quick and easy. It really doesn't matter what this dovetail is shaped because when it comes time to put it in the top of the leg, I'm gonna set this on the leg and draw a line and that line will be precisely whatever this is. And that's all that matters. So I can just flip it over, do the same thing on this side. And then I'm gonna do exactly the same thing on the other end uh, once I mark the distance in, which I'll get to in just a moment here. And uh, that's all I need. Whew. Keep it back on that stop. So let me finish this one up and I'll show you how to mark its length. Now this, like any other, is just another piece of stretcher. So what I want to do is put it down here and grab the stretcher that I used earlier to mark out the exact width of all the other stretchers, and that is my measuring stick. I'm going to put it on here, I'm going to line up the corners. Actually, to make it a little bit easier for me, I'm going to flip this around, because I prefer to cut on my right side. I'm going to line up the corners. I'm just going to put my finger on there, make those feel good. Then put my knife on here. And this is the length of the stretcher, the inside of the dovetail joint. So in other words, this needs to be cut a half inch longer, but this is where the shoulder of the dovetail will be. So I can go back, grab the square, mark the line around just like I did before. Only in this case, I'm gonna grab this piece, which is a half inch. I'm gonna stick it on that line Oop, don't wiggle it. I don't really care what this is, if it's a half inch or three quarter. It just needs to be about that much farther in. This is the length of the stick, and it doesn't matter what length it is because when you lay out the dovetail and the top of the board, um, it'll be whatever it ends up being. So if you want to make this three quarter inches long, it'll house in that. You just won't want it any longer than an inch and a half, otherwise it'll stick out the other end of the leg. So now that I have those two lines on there, I'm going to continue around this stick and draw those out. I'm going to cut it to length and then pair in the dovetail just like I did before. So this is the one I'm going to cut it all the way at. I'm going to cut in an eighth inch deep at this line and then pair in with the chisel and we'll have a stick. So I'll finish that up and we'll come back in a moment. Now one thing you want to be very careful about is to make this dovetail in the same line with this dovetail. So don't cut down on your depth here if you're cutting in from the side here. So rotate it so that you're cutting in the same way and just make sure you cut the dovetail the same direction on this as you do on that end and you're good to go. So I'll set it on there, cut the dovetail, pair it out, and we'll be right back where we were. And there you have it, a very simple setup so that now you have a dovetail on both ends and this is ready to key into the tops of the legs, keeping the legs from spreading apart. So now that we've finished the top stretcher, we have to work on the bottom stretcher. And this one, though it doesn't have the dovetails, it's a little bit more difficult because there are some more joinery. This one has both a tenon that slots into the leg, as well as a mortise for the drawer slide to fit into. So first thing we're gonna do is cut the tenon on the end. And that's merely going to be cutting out an eighth inch slot on either side. So we'll make a cut in from this end and a cut in from this end. And well, I'll show you when we get there. Just as with the top stretcher, we're going to start by actually squaring off the end. I have a whole like inch and a half to play with on this one. So I'm going to cut a mark in here and I'm going to travel that mark all the way around. This mark will then become a nice flush end to this board that I can measure off of. So we're gonna mark all the way around, cut it off just like I did in the last one, and I'll come back to you when that's done. So now that we have a flush end, we need to cut off a half inch, well, we need to cut in a half inch. So we're gonna be basically turning this end into a tenon. So I'm gonna make a mark a half inch in on one end and a half inch on the back. So on the front face and the back side of this. And then this needs to be an eighth inch deep. So I'm going to remark this at one eighth inch and I'm going to mark one eighth inch in on the end, on the back, the face, and the ends. Then we can put this in the vise and very carefully cut down to our depth. Okay. 
Now that we've cut the cheeks down on these, I can put it on here and cut off the shoulder. And this is just an eighth inch deep, so it only takes a couple passes. I want to be very light with it. And there's the little piece that comes out. So there you can see how the tenon works out. I'm going to cut the cheek off of this other side, or the shoulder. And there, now we have a tenon that will slot into the leg and hold this in place. Now we need to actually cut how long is this stick actually going to be. And in this case, I want to then line up again, flip it around again, I want to line up this shoulder with this shoulder. And I want to make sure that these are precisely the same length. I don't care what they are as long as they're all the same length. You may have heard me say that before. So I'm going to line them up really nice and close. Put my knife in here and go mark. Now that mark allows this to be precisely the same length. So I'm going to put a marking line all the way around. And we'll go from there. So just as before, I have the mark that is the shoulder and the second mark to cut it to length. This way, these shoulders will line up precisely and be the exact same length. So when they butt up against the legs on either side, the legs will be separated in parallel. If one's longer than the other, then the legs will want to twist, and we don't want that. So now we can cut this to length, and then repeat exactly the same steps on, steps on this end that we had for the tenon to make a tenon on this end. So I'll go ahead and finish that up and bring you back. So now the stretcher is almost done, and these will end up being separated about there with the drawer then sliding in between them. The last thing we needed to do is make little notches out here, mortises, for the tenons of the uh, drawer supports to connect into. And that will be just a little slot, one eighth, uh, 3 eighths inch deep, 3 eighths inch deep, 3 eighths inch deep or deep than width and three quarter inch wide. <laughs> so I'm going to set this to three eighths of an inch and then make a couple marks and show you exactly how to do that. So three eighths of an inch in and I want to come along here. It should be halfway through this stick because the stick is three quarter. And I'm going to put a mark all the way along here and then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and put a mark here. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing on this end since I have it all ready. So I'll put a mark 3 eighths of an inch here. Put it deep enough so that I can see it. And then 3 eighths of an inch deep here. The next thing I need to do is mark in 3 quarters of an inch from this shoulder. So since I've got that here, I might as well just go 3 quarters of an inch. So now that I have a mark on there at 3 quarters of an inch, I can then draw this line here and around to here. And I also need a line here just to extend back into the middle a little bit. That's going to weaken the tenon a little bit, but not that much. And this tenon really won't have that much strength or twist on it. So now that I have that in place, I'm going to come in with a small chisel and just slowly work down to that notch. A little bit here, a little bit there. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different ways to do it, but this is my preferred way. And just staying away from the lines as long as possible. Just chopping in a little bit here and a little bit there. Staying about a sixteenth of an inch or so away from that line. Trying to chop down to depth. Now on this end, I have the tenon. I want to keep that tenon there, so I have to be very careful not to blow that tenon out, which may happen. In which case, oh well, um, don't want to, but I'm just going to be slowly, fairly light taps, cutting down, being careful, just taking it down to depth. I may even just do this by hand without actually tapping it. Careful not to slice my finger too. I'm just going to keep going until I'm down to about 3 8 inch depth. Just to make this a little easier, I'm going to use a hold fast. I don't have to worry about it wiggling around. I probably should have done that right off the bat, but you always think about things a little late. Oh well. <laughs> so just keep coming in until we get down to depth.
So I'm just gonna slowly work this around. I know you've said, heard me say that slowly, which, you know, if you had a, uh, a mortising chisel or a mortising cutter, this might work a little bit faster. But I actually just like slowly taking it back, getting closer and closer to that line. Bevel down. There's that line there. Careful not to blow out the end and knock that tenon out. Now that I've gotten this most of the way out, I'm gonna roll it 90 degrees. Do basically the exact same thing from this side and clean this out. There you have it. A slot on this side for the drawer slide to then fit in and rest in that slot. And that is all it needs to do. So let's actually do the exact same thing on this side and uh, then call it a day. Now one thing I might need to mention is most of the time I cut the tenon first and then the mortise second. Uh, in this case I want to cut the mortise first um, because then I'll make the tenon match it. Um, since I'm doing the work on here I'd rather just do it and be done with it rather than having to come back to this piece later. And I can make that drawer slide fit this exactly rather than making this fit the drawer slide. So yeah, let's do it on the other end and uh, then this piece will be done. So there you have it. Uh, they may look a little complicated, but they are fairly simple. They go together, well, just kind of fun. And we'll actually be hopefully doing the joinery on that in the next video. I think that's what we're going to be getting to. So yes, uh, if you'd like to see the plans, if they're out right now, um, you'll, there'll be a link to my website down below. If they're not out quite yet, uh, then uh, you'll have to wait until I finish this build. <laughs> So we're having a little bit of fun with that. I hope you've enjoyed this. I do want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason why I can keep putting out long format, high detailed videos like this. If you'd like to find out more about Patreon or help out with that, you can do so right down there. Also, if you'd like to subscribe and see some other behind the scenes videos, you can do that as well. That's about it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day.